Hey everybody, it's your boy Kenny, and I'm here with another review. This is for Too Close to Home, which is a new show by Tyler Perry that comes on TLC. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first two episodes together, and uh, the name of these episodes is, uh, the first one is Dangerously Close, and the second one is Alabama. And uh, I'm about to really go in on this, because I really do love this show, and I'm a big fan of it. So, let's just begin. The show starts off, um, we meet the character Annabelle. Annabelle is an intern working in the White House, and we, when we first see her, she's going to meet some of her friends at this bar in D.C. Uh, her friends are Valerie, Dex, and Dex's boyfriend, Victor, and they're all hanging out with each other. And we can already tell that Annabelle has completely given them this false idea of who she is. You know, they think that she comes from this well-established family, that she comes from wealth. Well, in reality, you know, she actually is from a rural town of Happy, Alabama, and she's dirt poor. But then a lot more develops within the story. Uh, while they're, they're at this bar, they meet this guy named John, who um, Valerie and Dex are trying to hook her up with him, and they kind of push her onto the guy, and, like, and Valerie takes a picture, and Anna freaks out. She goes ballistic, and she runs up, the, and she literally, you know, runs up out of there. And then afterwards, we actually see that Anna is being followed. That someone has got her under surveillance, and so. So we, we already see that Anna's, um, Anna's is pretty much under some bullshit. And later on we find out what that is. Then, you know, Anna goes back home, you know, and she's living in this really nice apartment. I would probably, I'm from Washington, D.C. myself, so I'm thinking she probably lives like in a real upscale area of um, Northwest D.C. She gets out the car and she's approached by this character, J.B., now, J.B. actually dates her sister, and he's from Happy, Alabama, and he confronts her, letting her know she needs to start sending money home because the family's struggling, but yet she's up here living in a damn mansion, and her apartment is $4,000 a month. So he's like, well, you got money. Why ain't you sending money down home to your family? Why are you letting us struggle? Why are you letting everybody burden you know, why are you letting everybody else carry the burden while you go off and you live the good life and you don't even call, you don't send nothing to us? And it even gets to the point that, you know, that JB gets that J B gets gets very physical and aggressive with her. And she lies and says that, you know, I don't have any money, J B, that, you know, I'm paying this apartment with student loans. Now, we all know that, that no damn student loan is going to pay for no $4,000 a month apartment. So, that was, a, that was like, come on, girl, you stretching it really thin. <laughs> but, you know, once, you know, J, and like she's trying to get JB to let her go, and, JD, and JB is like literally grabbing on her arm, like for dear life, like letting her know, I'm not through with you. You gonna like? You need to explain yourself. Why is it that you haven't helped your family, and why is it that you're living this great lifestyle, and you haven't sent no money home to your family, and you haven't reached out to us in over three years? And what stops it was that Anna's neighbor saw what was going down, and he somewhat intervened, was like, you know, you know what's going on. So eventually, JB let her go, and then she goes into her apartment. And she gets on the phone, and you hear this guy who's saying that, uh, so who was, this, who was that guy at the bar that you were hanging with, talking about John? And then he says, oh, oh yeah, and who also, who was that guy you were talking to in front of your apartment? So we actually see that Anna is under surveillance, and here she is kind of like being controlled. And... She's pleading like, please don't be angry with me. I don't like it when you're angry with me. I don't want to make you angry. So it's like, and, and so immediately you're thinking, what the hell is going on here? You know, that's, 
like, girl, you know, you come to D.C. and it seemed to me that you just got yourself involved in some bullshit. But, <laughs> but, uh, more is revealed later. Uh, next we actually go to Happy Alabama in this trailer park. And we actually meet Bonnie, who's, who's Anna's sister, and she's raising four children. Um, the main child that they focus on in this episode is Mac. And Mac is actually the son of, um, of her other sister, um, of her other sister, Shelby. And we're going to meet Shelby later, too. Uh, but, uh, she gives Mac a plate to give to the grandmother. And let's just say there's something up with this, with the, with the grandmother's trailer, because soon as Matt goes in to d um, deliver the food, he comes out and he is throwing up. So, it's something about that trailer that is either dead, buried, and stinking up in there that it really made this boy Matt sick. So, we actually meet, you know, Matt's character and the kids go off to school. Next, we meet Brody. And Brody actually approaches Bonnie for the rent. And Brody comes off kind of nasty to her, saying that, you know, because at first, um, his father, whose name is Dr. Allen, is, was the actual landlord for that trailer park. And normally he would come and pick up the rent and also fix appliances and things like that for the, you know, for the residents, for the residencies. But, uh, what, what, but um, Dr., Dr. Allen is now ill. And later on, we find out what he's ill from. But he's saying that, you know, my father always gave you guys breaks. And, you know, you never paid on time. But it's like, with me, I'm not going to tolerate that. Um, I want you guys to start paying me, you know, what you owe me. And because um, she gave him her rent, but said that um, she doesn't have the mother's rent because the mother couldn't find it. But she was, but she was like, you know, I can't. And then she's like, but I'll go look for it. And you can definitely tell there is like some some chemistry between Brody and um, between Brody and Bonnie at this moment. And let's just say Bonnie is Bonnie is just kind of like bothered of the fact that Brody is coming at her like this. Like Brody, you know me. And when have I ever been the type to try to get over on you? But then she asks about his father and how he's doing, and she says that, look, I can come over and help out with him, you know, in exchange for Mama's rent. And at this time, Brody is just still in his feelings, like, look, just bring me the money, Bonnie. Just give me the money. And, and then, you know, once, you know, she, and then he's like saying, well, how are you going to, how are you going to um, watch my father anyway when you got a job at the diner? And you got all these kids. And he said, and she said that, look, JB can watch the kids. And immediately he gets in his feelings when it comes to JB. He's like, you know, you're back with him again. So, you know, how long is it going to be before he ends up, you know, running out on you again or finding some other woman to shack up with? And Bonnie immediately shuts him down. And then eventually, you know, Brody leaves. So we actually see that there's some drama there. And that's going to definitely unfold later on. But one thing we definitely see in that scene is that, you know, Brody and, Brody and Bonnie got some history. <laughs> Which will all be revealed soon. So, next thing you know, um, we actually see, uh, oh yeah, and also, uh, Bonnie also mentioned you know, mentions to Brody that, you know, that Anna's doing really well. She got a job in the White House. And Brody's just pretty much unbothered by it because, you know, later on we find out why. So she tries to call Anna, and Anna at that time is right in the Oval with the President, the First Lady, and one of, a part of Anna's job is that she has to name the person that he's taking a photo with. And she's distracted and totally forgets to mention the name of the person that's standing right next to him. And, you know, you can definitely tell that the president is bothered. 
and they take the picture and then he summons her back and he just goes in on her saying that look you need to be on your job and if you're not on your job we can get someone else you know and just pretty much just kind of goes in and you know attacks her and the first lady is like look you don't need to be so hard on her like look if it's a problem we can just get someone else to do the job but you don't have to you know demean her like that and he's saying that don't worry she just needs to learn and she needs to be on her job so we see that there's something there <laughs> that something's going on because it, it's just it's just it's just weird that okay she made a she made an honest mistake and you pretty much blew it completely out of proportion but then later on we find out why Uh, next, we actually see that uh, Bonnie um, actually, we well, actually see Brody, you know, um, attending to his father, Dr. Allen, and we see early, and we see pretty, and it's pretty evident that Dr. Allen is actually suffering from Alzheimer's disease. And he asks him about his brother, Jesse, and we don't know who Jesse is at this time, but He's asking about his brother Jesse, and he's also asking about Brody's mother, who is who is now deceased. And there's a knock on the door, and it's Bonnie. Bonnie comes over with the mother's rent, and then also she had made some food for Brody, because you know Brody has been pretty, you know, pretty busy, you know, attending to his father. I mean, and we all know that people with Alzheimer's disease, they definitely need, you know routine care around the clock because you know because of because of the disease they can they can you know fly off the handles at times so next thing you know dr allen's up like look i'm about to go um handle this business and he says that um and and Brody's like oh no that's 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 not that's not today he's like yes it is today and i'm about to leave and i'm about to go now and then bonnie intervenes and says that um uh, Dr. Allen, hi, it's Bonnie. Uh, Mama needs some help with her pipes, so um, could you actually come take care of that tomorrow? She's like, oh yeah, you know, Miss Jolene, yeah, I, I, I can definitely take care of that tomorrow. She's like, yeah, so you definitely need to go to bed and get you some sleep now, right? She's like, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. I'll, I'm definitely going to give you some sleep then. I'll be down there tomorrow. So, he, that, so she uses that to get him to go back to bed, and Brody is impressed by that you know, that she actually knows how to work with a father. And so they go in, they eat, you know, he eats, you know, and they, they have a conversation and let's see, okay. And, you know, they start talking and it's pretty much evident that Brody has feelings for Bonnie. But Bonnie is like, no, you're in love with Anna, you know, so we actually know that Anna and Brody used to date, but Anna has not reached out to any of them in the past three years. So he was saying that, look, she wanted the city life, she left me, it's over between us, you know, I don't care. And... And like he, and like they actually, and he actually gets up and they start making out. But then eventually Bonnie puts them off. Like, look, I'm with JB now. It is what it is. You know what we had was over. So leave it alone. So that's really interesting that Brody and Bonnie, you know, had a little some some. But yet Brody used to date her sister Anna. So. Trust me, there's going to be some drama spilling up with that one. Next, we see that Anna, uh, back in D.C., we see that Anna has been summoned to the Oval by the President. And he tells the Secretary to go home and, and then uh, make sure that Larry is guarding the door. She goes in and she says that, you know, I'm sorry for... I'm sorry for earlier today, and I'm also sorry for yesterday as well. 
So now it has been revealed that the president has Anna under surveillance, where he knows her every move and knows everything she does. And then she says that, are you still mad at me? Are you still mad at me? And he gets up and immediately starts making out with her. And they strip down and end up having sex on the oval desk. Talking about scandal. So she's having an affair with the president. And, yet, and also that the president has complete surveillance and control over her life. The first lady realizes that the president hasn't come back to bed. So she goes downstairs, you know, and she runs into Larry, who's, you know, who's a part of the Secret Service. And she's, you know, asking Larry all these questions, and he's denying everything. And he's saying that the president's in the Situation Room, but it's like, but you're standing in front of the Oval, so why aren't you there? And he's like, I can't explain, ma'am, and I can't get out any information. So, the first lady is not buying it. So, and then she asks about Judy, the secretary, where's Judy? And she's like, oh, Judy's gone home for the evening. So, she sits down, ends up calling Judy. Judy's like, oh, the president's in the... The president's in the situation room, and I'm left for the day. And then the next thing you know, we see Judy walking around the corner, and the first lady sitting there. So she's like, okay, we're going to be all good little boys and girls, and we're going to wait for the president to come out. So, because obviously, he's in the Oval, he's not in the situation room, as you two tried to suggest before. So, something's going on, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. And... Inside the Oval, the President and Anna are bumping bodies, and they're getting it in, and the next thing you know, the President passes out on top of Anna, and it's, a, it's pretty much somewhat apparent that he's had a heart attack. And she freaks out, she screams, and next thing you know, she opens the door, and they all go in, and... The first lady's right there, and she sees that Anna has been screwing her husband. Because Anna, her shoes are off, and her dress is unzipped, and Judy, the secretary, literally pulls Anna and tells her, get the hell up out of here. You need to go. Your ass needs to leave. And that's pretty much how episode one ended, where it's been, where Anna gets busted. And the president has obviously had a heart attack, and the first lady now knows what's really going on. Now, the second episode is called Alabama. And after that, yes. And after that whole situation where Anna has, has pretty much been, pretty much the affair between Anna and the president, has been has been found out by the first lady. She actually goes to meet up with uh, with with uh, with Valerie and Dex, and you can definitely tell that Anna is shaken up. And she calls Valerie aside to talk to her, and she's saying that look, I need to tell you because they they know that she's been dating somebody, but they don't know who, and she hasn't really led up to any real information about what's going on. So. She finally tells Valerie that the other guy that she's been seeing all this time has been the president and that something happened to him, you know. And she lets him know that while, you know, and she, she pretty much just exposes the fact that she's been dating the president. Man, Valerie flips the script on Anna's ass where she is like, oh, don't touch me, get away from me, I'm not supposed to know this information. Tell me who who in history has had an affair with the president and their lives ended well. So she is like, get away from me. I don't want nothing to do with you. You know, you can keep that bullshit over there with you. I'm done. So she completely runs off and and then, you know, 
it's kind of like she just she just pretty much gives gives Anna the back hand. Next, we see Anna um, returns back to her apartment and she's watching the developments on the news about the president. And the next thing you know, the first lady and Larry, a part of the Secret Service, intervenes. They they literally just come into her apartment like it's nothing. I mean, didn't knock, you know, didn't call. They just walk right in. And the first lady begins to read Anna for filth. She pretty much knows everything about Anna. She knows her real name is Annabelle. She knows that she's from Happy Alabama. She even told, she pretty much said that, yeah, you're nothing but a stupid piece of Alabama trash. <laughs> you know, pretty much who was going in like, oh, you think you can just screw my husband and I'm going to let you walk away freely? I'm about to destroy you. You're not going to be able to get a job. You're going to be a joke. I'm going to make sure that the, that the media rips your ass apart. And... Anna's trying to defend herself and trying to defend the fact that, you know, you're the first lady, you know, you're supposed to protect the president. And she's like, sweetie, I'm an Ivy League educated attorney, honey. You know, <laughs> she's like, oh, so you think that this is going to come back, this is going to come back to bite me? And she's like, honey, no. <laughs> I'm going to ruin you. You know, I'm going to teach you what I taught every other boy that he screwed of what happens when you try to take what's mine. And then she was saying that you're supposed to be working in, you know, in a social service. Um, or or that, I think that was the name of her position. That, uh, and she said, so what part of your job description calls for you to be on your knees in the over? So, the first lady is giving her the blues, and then she sends in a group of secret service men, and she says, take everything. And, she, and Anna's like, no, that's a, those are my things. And she's like, nothing in here belongs to you. She says, first of all, you are dumb as hell. Like, you're, the, you're like the dumb little slut that he has been taking care of. You're a possession. You have no power. Everything in here belongs, there's nothing in here belongs to you. So they take everything, and she says that, uh, and you're going to be locked out of this apartment once I leave here. So if you thought, and so she's like, look, I wanted to end the relationship, but he wouldn't let me. She's like, of course not. You know, he can be very controlling. But if you thought he was bad, you have no idea of the monster that stands before you. So things have hit the fan. And now Anna's life and everything that she's had up to this point has literally been ripped right from under her. Next, we meet, um, back in Happy Alabama, uh, we meet Shelby. Shelby is the youngest sister of, of Bonnie and Anna. And let's just say Shelby is a character in and of herself. Shelby is obviously a drug addict, and she's definitely she's definitely a hoe. You know, so we when we first meet her, um, her and her boyfriend Rick have gotten into a fight, and Rick pretty much has thrown her out the house. He drops her off, you know, into the trailer park, um, and she's banging on the mother's door trying to get in, but. Obviously, the mother's either asleep or can't get to the door, but she's banging the door, and Matt actually sees her from Bonnie's, from Bonnie's trailer. He wakes up, Bonnie says that, you know, she's here, and Bonnie's like, who? And he says, my mama. So, we now know that, you know, that Shelby is, is actually Matt's mother, but you can definitely tell it's a strained relationship because his mother's a drug addict. So... Bonnie goes out, you know, to 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 uh, meet up with Shelby. Shelby begins to squat and pee right in front of her mother's house. So <laughs> there's no shame with Shelby. Shelby is so far gone. Shelby don't give a damn. So she pretty much gets Shelby's attention, like, "What the hell are you doing here? Like, what's going on with you? You know?" And and she's like, "Look, you know," and and she really and. 
immediately Bonnie realizes that, you know, that somebody has punched Shelby in her face because she actually has a has a black eye. And and she's like, Well, you know, me and Rick got into the fight and Rick kicked me out of the house and I have nowhere to go and you know, and she's still trying to bang on the shit. She's like, Look, mama can't get get there like well I know mama's home why don't she just answer the door she's like you know she can't answer the door so she lets her come over to stay at her at her house but she says do not say anything to Mac do not talk to him don't say nothing to him so they get over there and you know immediately Mac is sitting right there and she's like hey Mac and she's like I told you don't say nothing to Mac but she's like but it looks like he want to say something to me though so, so she's obviously, you know, out of it, and you know she lets she lets Shelby sleep on the couch, but she says she only can stay for one day, and in the morning she's got to go. Okay, so that ends that. Um, next. We see that Anna, now that she has been kicked out of her apartment, and also Anna had a car that was taken from her too. So the president was keeping her up really well. Like he pretty much gave her materialistic possessions, but never gave her any money. So she was pretty much a kept bitch for the past, I would say, the past the whole time that they were, that were they where they were involved in this you know, affair. So, next, she um, she goes to Dick's apartment, and Victor lets her in, and as soon as we go, as soon as she comes in, she sees Dex is there, and she also sees Valerie is there as well. And, later on, and within that, and then next thing you know, it is revealed that Valerie has let Dex know everything that Anna has told her about her affair with the president. So, Dex is like, just tell me the truth. Did this really happen? It, is, is, is this true? And she's, and Valerie is just mean as hell. She's giving her the blues like, you know, she's going to ruin us. She's going to ruin our lives with this. She's so damn selfish. We were your friends. We were the ones who had your back, and this is how you would pay us. And then Valerie's just so so mean and so over the top that she ends up leaving. So next thing you know, she asks Dex, "Can she stay there?" And you know, Dex is like, "Well, why can't you reach out to your family? I mean, hell, you know, your mom." Uh, he's like, "He's like, why can't you just reach out to your family?" I mean, after all, you said your dad's an attorney and that your mother is a professor at Harvard. Lies! You know. <laughs> Pretty much said that, well, you, you you come from money, you come from, you know, you come from good breeding, you know, why not ask your family for help? She's like, I can't. But, you know, it's like, I need a place to stay. And Dex is like, no, you can't stay here. And then Victor, his boyfriend, is actually the is actually one person that's showing her some compassion. Like, look, you can stay with us as long as you want. And that and Dex is like, no, she cannot stay here. She cannot stay here. And so then she's like, okay, fine. Well, can I can I you know get some money you know so I can you know you know find me a place to stay or whatever. So Victor takes Dex's wallet, gives her all the money that's left in there. It's like, look, this is all we have. And you know. You know, she takes the money and then she leaves out, and you can see that Dex is pissed. You know, that he is like really pissed off that this has happened. So next, we actually uh, see that um, back in Happy, Alabama, while Shelby sleeping, JB comes in. And immediately you see that there is some serious tension between JB and Shelby. Because they go back and forth, you know, swinging insults between each other. And he's saying, well, if you don't like it, you can get the hell out. And she said that this is Bonnie's house. And he's, he's like, well, I paid him rent. He's like, oh, when? Oh, just this month? 
and then you're gonna end up going off to one of your other whores that you that you spool around with, and you know, so it's just like back and forth. They just there, there there's definitely like no no love between them at all, and it just gets messy. But then the next thing you know, Shelby's trying to get a hit. She's trying to get a fix, and she goes to. And the next thing you know, she's down on her knees trying to suck off JB. And I'm like, wow. And you know that this is your sister's boyfriend. And you just went all in. Like, you was just going to do what you got to do to get your fix. And JB pretty much brushes her off. And he leaves and he goes into his truck. And then after that, back at the house with Brody, Brody's in bed, and next thing you know, we see Dr. Allen has a shotgun and is about to load, and next thing you know, he shoots the gun and the bullet goes in the pillow right next to Brody. Brody rushes the gun from him and he's saying, I'm going to kill you, Jesse, I'm going to kill you, you know. Jesse, and like, so obviously he's thinking in his mind that Brody is Jesse, his brother, you know, his younger brother, and he's like, Daddy, it's me, Brody, it's me, and then next thing you know, Dr. Allen snaps back, he starts having this emotional moment where he says that, I can't live like this, I don't want to be a burden to you, Brody, just kill me. Just pull the trigger. And Brody's like, no, I'm going to be here for you, Daddy. I'm not going to kill you. You know, I love you, Daddy. And then he starts talking about the mother. And he was saying that I hated her. And I didn't want to see her suffer. So I gave her all her pills. And he said, and he's saying, like, what, what, are you, what are you trying to say, Daddy? He's like, I gave her all her pills. So, he's kind of admitting, like, someone in that moment that I killed, that he pretty much killed the mother. But when Brody wants to get more information out of him, Dr. Allen fades back, fades back to black once again. So, Brody is definitely broken down and emotional. And, obviously, the other son, Dr. Allen hated. So, he hates Jesse. But he loved Brody. So that's apparent in that scene. Next thing you know... Oh. Sorry about that. Whew! Allergies is crazy this year. Time of the year. But, uh... Next thing you know, we see Shelly goes out outside to the truck to meet up with JB and she's still trying to get a hit. She's still trying to get something from him. And JB is like, get the hell out of my truck. And next thing you know, she gets down on she gets down on her knees and starts to suck JB off. And that was all she wrote. Uh, Bonnie gets a call. At the same time, Bonnie gets a call from the mother. You know, the mother's oxygen has you know, her oxygen tank has fallen and she can't reach it. So, Bonnie gets up, goes to the mother's trailer, um, and then all her way back, she hears all this commotion coming from JB's truck. She looks inside and sees that Shelby is on top of JB, and she is riding JB into the night. So, Bonnie's pissed, and she goes back to her trailer after seeing that. So after all is done and JB has shot a load up in Shelby, Shelby's like, okay, so where's the stuff? And he's and she's like and he's like, What stuff? He's like, you know, the stuff. I know you got some and he's like, I never told you that. She's like, Well then give me some money then. He's like, I ain't got no damn money. And she's like, You better give me something, J B and he's like, Girl, get the fuck out of my truck. And she's like, I'm not going nowhere. You gonna give me some money, and you gonna give me some drugs too. And he goes, gets out of the truck, 
the fool shall be out of the truck, Shelby locks the doors, finds his gun, and tells him, you better back the hell away from here. You know, I'm about to take this truck, and, and you know, she pretty much, you know, pulls a gun out on him, lets him know, you better back away from this truck. I'm about to take this, and it was like, bye, bitch. <laughs> and literally, you know, literally drove this 18-wheeler off, and JB is freaking the fuck out. Because his, cause he pretty much is a truck driver, and he, you know, transports goods from one state to the next, which is how he was able to run into Annabelle early on in, um, in the previous episode. So, his merchandise is every, and everything is in that truck, and she literally drives off and leaves his ass. So, he's mad as shit. He goes in the house asking Bonnie for her key so he can, you know, so he can you know, chase Shelby down, and Bonnie is like, you ain't getting my car keys, if you want your truck back, you need to talk to the sheriff, and she's like, but no, Shelby done took my load, and she's like, yeah, she took both of your loads, didn't she, but you ain't getting my truck, you know, if you want the truck, you need to call the sheriff, because you ain't getting my car keys, and the hell with you, like, I saw what you were doing with her, so what, you taking advantage of drug addicts now? That's what you that's what you about, JB? She's like, you know what? I'm sick of your ass. I'm getting tired of giving you chance after chance and all you do is fuck up, so I'm over it. And the next thing you know, JB tries to wrestle Bonnie for the car keys and we see Mac got a damn gun out and was like, You let her go. You let her go and got a gun out on JB and JB being this crazy ass like, What do you think you're gonna do, boy? You gonna shoot me? Do it. Fucking shoot me. And she's like, JB, get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here now. And JB finally leaves. She gets the gun from Mac, and Mac breaks down. So it's like you feel for Mac because, for one, Mac, Mac is very protective of Bonnie because he sees Bonnie as being the mother figure that he doesn't have with his own mother, Shelby. And then definitely he's not going to let nobody, you know, hurt his Aunt Bonnie. So, that was, def that was definitely a, a movie the same way. Yeah. So, we actually see Anna is still walking in the streets of D.C. because she has nowhere to go. Um, you know, uh, Victor had gave her some money. So she ends up at the bar. Um, she ends up talking to a bartender. And she asks if she uses his phone, and she she calls Brody, but Brody doesn't answer. Uh, and then um, next thing you know, we see that she runs into John, who is the guy that she met in the beginning of um, of episode one. Um, he wants to, you know, buy her a drink, but his last call, and he offers to, you know, that she can come home, and he has, you know, some, she has, he has some liquor at home, and at first she, she says no, and she's not, and she's kind of like very hesitant of going back home with him, but, uh, later on, she finally caves in and decides to go home with him. So she goes back home. She goes. She goes to John's apartment with him. Excuse me. And I mean, I hate to be doing this in front of you guys, but hey, my allergies are bad, and I'll just make sure I have it under control the next time around. But I really want to get this. Get this. I really want to get this review out to you guys. Ah. Pardon me. Well, she goes back home. She goes. I mean, she goes to John's apartment. You know, she's been, she's slugging the bourbon like it's her last drink. <laughs> and, and obviously, you know, we all know why, you know, Anna's drinking so hard. But he starts trying to ask her questions about her job and about what she does, and she's very hesitant to talk about that. And, you know, she, and eventually she gets so bothered by him that she wants to get up and leave. Because it's like, it's obvious, you know, John doesn't know how to talk to women. Because at first he starts accusing her of being a prostitute and, 
you know, saying, well, if you are a prostitute, I don't have that much money on me. I mean, so it's like John don't know what to fucking say to this girl, but he does like her. So she's like, you know what, I'm about to go, I'm about to go, I'm about to leave. And he, he's like, no, 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 you can stay here on the couch. Trust me, I won't do anything to you. Um, I'm a gentleman, you know, I'm not going to try to make a move on you or anything, but obviously you look like you're tired and you're distraught, so why don't you just stay here and, you know, and sleep, sleep everything off. It's kind of late. So she finally decides to stay on the couch, and, you know, the next morning, the story has leaked everywhere. We actually see that, you know, Dex and Victor are in bed. They see the story on the news. Valerie hears it in her car. Uh, and we actually also see that, um, that um, John turns on the television and the story is the story is on and he now see and then also he also finds out that Anna is leaked in the scandal because now Anna's picture is now being shown on the news saying that she was the last person with the president and the the situation is 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 very it is 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 like very you know conspicuous, and immediately he calls this editor at the Washington Sun and says that look the woman who was the last person with the president is right now sleeping on my sofa. So at first I was kind of like liking John at first, and then I see that wow he a grimy motherfucker, and that he's actually a journalist for the Washington Sun, so he's gonna plan you know, an ambush on Anna to get a story. And he's like, wow, this girl's going to win me the Pulitzer Prize. So I'm like, you son of a bitch. So Anna done put herself into the lion's den, and she doesn't even realize it. So that's my take for, um, for um, Too Close to Home episodes one and two. Um, definitely subscribe to me and, you know, like this video, leave comments, and, um, I will definitely be, I will definitely return with, um, with more, with more reviews for you, so, uh, take care, guys.